Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World with me, John Jordan. So we're doing our, our regular monthly update of the most popular blockchain games. So basically I'm just looking um, at uh, the DapRadar data and just plotting it and, and just having a look to see what's happening in the sector um, in terms of on-chain activity. So um, DapRadar looks at the uh, about 20 or so sort of blockchains and looks at all the uh, dApps on them and, and pulls various data from from them. They're, they are public blockchains, so the data is all, all open to see. Um, and so just have a look to see what's going on with some of these sort of games and, and excuse me, game projects. So this is 2021 so far. You can see not much is happening in these projects at the start of the year. Uh, we have Alien World blowing up in sort of April uh, and May. Um, and uh, so a big peak sort of dropped back down again. Another big peak um, in August dropped back down again. And now we're going back up again. So so the interesting thing about Alien Worlds running on the Wax blockchain is it pretty much has sustained. So it's had these weird peaks, not weird peaks. It's had these peaks. Um, these peaks are mainly involved uh, with bots, we think. Um, and there are some bots still working now, but over time they, they've sort of stabilised that. And we can kind of see there's a fairly steady, um, fairly steady amount of uh, wallet activity, whether that's people or, or bots or, or you know a combination thereof. Um, and uh, yeah, again we're sort of going back up again. It's interesting with Alien Worlds; they are um, they've just released the new UI, um, which is much much better than the previous one. And they've got a whole bunch of stuff finally going live on the on the features side. So it'll be interesting to see how that sort of works out when there's actually a lot more to do in there. At the moment, it's it's pretty much a sort of token distribution uh, model, although there is some other stuff around the planets and, and things. But um, a lot more coming with Alien World, so we'll see how that I impacts it. Um, as we as sort of discussed last time, um, uh, we had this this big blow up of Crypto Blades. So Crypto Blades um, was a, it's a very, or is, I suppose it's a still live, very basic sort of um, NFT mining game on the uh, Binance Smart Chain. And basically you're mining out this token called Skill, which is their own token. And, and uh, Skill token price went through the roof, everyone piled in. Um, skill token price collapsed and everyone pulled out again. So <laughs> pretty much what you see here over a period of a, of a few weeks is you see this becoming, you know, the uh, biggest blockchain game. Um, more than Alien Worlds peaking at over 400,000 daily actually unique wallets and then basically collapsing back down again to about 10,000 now. I mean, the thing still works obviously functionally, but but pretty much dead. Um, uh, and then what's really been interesting to see what's happening in um, September is the rise of Splinterlands. So for a long time, Splinterlands was the most popular blockchain game um, with about eight to ten thousand DAUs. Um, Alien Worlds came along and sort of, sort of, uh, you know, <laughs> went, went in, in, you know, a factor order of magnitude bigger. Um, and finally, uh, Splinterlands has, has now um, has, has sort of regained its, its its position here as the as the top blockchain game at least for a period of time. And now it's sort of vying again. Well, now it's vying with, with um, Alien Worlds. But now at this point, they're both three hundred fifty thousand daily active unique wallet. So, so pretty impressive. Uh, Splinterlands has been running on the Hive blockchain. Um, it's been going for a couple of years, it used to run on, on the Steam blockchain when that was the, when, that, when that launched. Um, so of all these games, um, Splinterlands is the most sort of deeply featured game. It's, it's, it's a trading card game, a bit like a, a simple version of Hearthstone, but it has lots of other stuff. And and um, the real interesting, uh, you know, the real drive here for, for um, daily activity is you can now stake their SPS token. So there is, there is in fact a um, SPS is a governance token um, and actually they're airdropping so they're a few months into basically a, a year-long airdrop so every day you get some of this token airdropped and then you can then stake it um, for more um, <laughs> so a bit like what, what Axie is doing although without the continual airdrop um, although Axie did do, uh, did do a, a one-off airdrop um, we'll talk about that a bit in a minute um, so uh, Splinterlands and Alien Worlds are you know are both interesting projects with, with good teams behind them and and they, you know it's good to see that they are both um, Sort of uh, reaping the benefits of interest in blockchain games. They're both pretty easy, easy to use. I mean, Wax and uh, the Hive blockchains are fairly straightforward. There's no complicated wallet stuff. You can just sign up with an email and password. So um, good to see that that is a good sign. And in a sense, you know, I don't mean to be mean, but it's sort of a good sign that something like Crypto Blades uh, sort of sort of collapsed in a way because it, it wasn't a very it was, a, it was a very particular sort of game. I mean, I guess we call these games game now. It's not a term I like. Uh, but game finance. It was a very particular way of, of extracting cash. Um, <laughs> uh, and it, while it wasn't a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme, there was a sort of an element in that in terms of how the tokenomics worked, I, I, I think. Um, I put in here Arcade. So Arcade isn't a game. It is a mobile um, it's a mobile, mobile app and it has this sort of, um, sort of uh, it, they call it a mining mechanic where you basically just hit, you basically just have a button um, and, and it sort of supposedly mines out a token. Um, it's not really doing any crypto mining in that sense. It's just an in engagement mechanic, and there is there is a little mini game in there as well. But but what's interesting about about Arcade is it is a project from Gamey. Gamey um, is 
a company actually uh, bought by Animoca Brands back um, uh, a few months ago. But before that, it's been it's been it's, it's a real money uh, mobile um, sort of gaming app. Um, it's been going for a while, and basically, it's a way of sort of um, it monetizes through advertising mainly. Um, and if you sort of play the games and watch the adverts, you can sort of win a bit of sort of money back. But you can get real money out of it. Um, you just do have to be pretty committed to get <laughs> to get the money out. But some people do win hundreds of dollars. Um, so basically, it's a sort of a gamified way of, of running a, running an ad service, an advertising service, really, with games around it. But they're coming to the blockchain. They've got this gamey token. Animoca has done a whole bunch of stuff around that. And, and um, Arc 8 is the sort of launch of that. So this is not really at the moment a blockchain game. It's more a blockchain gaming platform. Um, so, um, but interesting to see, as with all these things, it's sort of bombed up. Um, um, uh, could just to sort of log in every day to to hit the refresh button. Um, you know, a bit, a bit like a bit like Alien Worlds, really. You basically um, do this sort of mining idle sort of thing, but there is more game stuff sort of coming. So I've, I've included it in there this time just to sort of see, see where it goes. Um, so there we go. Um, pretty positive on the big side. I've done a few more games. I've broken these ones out because these are smaller games. So these ones here are basically everything over sort of 200,000 DAUs, 300,000 DAUs. Um, here we're talking about sort of um, 40,000 DAUs. So, so, so a fact, almost a factor. Uh, of magnitude smaller and um, what we got here we've got upland this is the mobile um sort of monopoly style um game uh running on the you can get it through the app store and the google play store it's seen pretty good growth you know up and down a little bit um hasn't seen the sort of the breakout breakout growth we've seen from like the open blockchain stuff so so this is running on a version it is running on eos actually um but it's a sort of closed version because they have to go through the app store and you have to buy they do have a cryptocurrency, um, the, the UPX token, but you have to sort of buy that with, with, with your credit card and you can't really get it out of the, of the app. So they have limitations there. Um, yeah, they've been pretty successful um, in a sense. If you look from the start of the year, they've um, gone from 5,000 to 35,000, um, but they've not seen the sort of that 10x thing that we've sort of um, seen previously with, with Splinterlands. Axie, um, so running on its own Ronin chain. Um, this Remember, this is just the on-chain stuff. So this is people um, effectively breeding and... Um, and trading um, on the marketplace. So we saw a big sort of spike in sort of July, August. Um, so you know, quite a big drop off now. So we're back under 10,000. Um, this is sort of driven a little bit by what's going on with the price of, of the SLP token, um, things like that. So, so um, and the other thing, I'm not sure that that the, these figures include the staking uh, contract. So um, obviously people have people who have AXX token can now stake it and get a reward. And a whole bunch of people, 10,000 wallets, I think, were rewarded with, with an airdrop as well. So we'd expect to see more than 10,000 people because people would start staking it. So I'm not really sure we've, we're seeing that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure that um, these figures actually include the staking mechanic, which you could could, in, could say isn't the game, but it's part of the ecosystem. Um, I put this one in as well, Farmer's World. I mean, again, this is very much in the D, in the GameFi sort of category. So you basically have it, you have to buy a bunch of NFTs and then you can do stuff in the game to, to sort of get value back out again. It's not really what I would consider a game, but I, I guess I shouldn't be too mean about these sort of projects. And I think it's interesting to actually sort of log them and see, you know, because these things can explode fairly uh, rapidly. Uh, a bit like a bit like uh, Crypto Blades um, exploded and then, and then sort of collapsed, <laughs> if that's the right metaphor. So I'm interested in sort of Farmer's World because it's not, it's not really a game. It's, it's just a sort of a, a very simple sort of gamified uh, DeFi uh, kind of system um, and and they're quite hard to run in a sustainable manner um, they, they tend to they tend to get very big and, and then sort of implode under the weight of, of, of growth so I'm sort of interested to see um, that and actually I couldn't I was messing around with it last night and and, and there is there is like with a lot of these things it's quite expensive to get into it because you have to buy the NFTs to start off so I'm sort of interested to see how that plays out so there we go. Um, there's always lots going on in the blockchain space, in the blockchain gaming space, particularly uh, now. So it's good to sort of track these numbers. I mean, it's interesting that while you know some things are, some things sort of blow up and blow down again. Some things are growing quite, quite strongly and sustainably, and then some things are sort of um, you know sort of growing uh, in a smaller level, which is not to say they can't explode later. But but every, every I think you have to think every project, every project sort of has its own trajectory. That there's a wider trend that this sort of stuff is is, is very popular and lots of people are looking into it. But not every project is is going to grow in the same way um, and, and there's sort of nothing wrong with that um, and, and people have made different technical choices particularly something around upland which is which is basically constrained to a two degree by going through the official app stores whereas axe infinity um, doesn't go through the app stores and uh, and it's just sort of distributed by 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 its um android apk so it can it can sort of be the, be the full the full open open um blockchain 
Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. This is Blockchain Gaming World, where we spend our time looking at uh, blockchain games and, and, and digging into numbers and all that sort of stuff. So please subscribe to the channel. But thanks for watching this one.